All right, this is a quick uh, add-on to the demonstration video I did the other day. This is a continuation from what we did the other day, which was using Faker to generate uh, what I'll call a database of fake patients that we could refer to. Uh, we're now taking the next step and making realistic and repeatable um, uh, appointments for those patients uh, so that we can combine the two elements and actually simulate uh, the carecloud.com API, which requires you know, an actual practice connection, um, credentials, you know, the ability to see PII for actual patients and so on. So we want to stay away from that and just work in a completely isolated, developer-friendly world without having to worry about developers having BAAs or anything like that with um, the uh, organization, the, the CareCloud company. So. Real quickly though, this is just another exploration into Python. In this case, we've got what will be deployed as a Lambda and is deployed as a Lambda. Um, it basically um, does the stuff that is interesting in a long-term way versus coming up with 2,000, 3,000 fake patients, uh, which we run once, put it aside, and now we have that as our quote database. Uh, unlike that, if we're dealing with appointments, we could be running a month from now, two months from now, and looking at, for instance, the current day or within a couple of days of the of the current day to find out what we have as a appointment schedule. And we want to be able to generate that one time, but then after that, not, not have it uh, remake and possibly even look a little weird, right? You go and you refresh uh, a particular window. You don't want to have that change every time. I'll give you an example. Let's see. So here we have the app's running, I uh, have an appointment um, tab here, and it's today, Friday, June 2, and we see we have three patients. It's Friday, it's kind of a, a, a quiet day, and actually it's an upper uh, surgery day, so you probably have less patients on a surgery day. But let's see, we go to next Thursday, that is going to have, that's a, probably a, a big office day, so you'll have between 20 and 35 patients visiting that day. But what we don't want to do now, if we go back to Friday, today, we didn't want that to change. We want that to, to stay fixed. So we'll show you that in a second, how we do that. So um, anyway, from there, let's go ahead and go back to the code. So we'll do a quick walk through the code. Um, oh, first, thanks to Ch ChatGPT again, you know, because I'm just learning Python. Um, it's very helpful. It, really, you could just say like, hey, how do I get the date in this format, you know, or what can I use to um, uh, let me look at this to check to see if an S3 object exists or not? And I'll give you examples of where ChatGPT helped. And also, Krishna Kanchanat, I'm a good friend and colleague who I bothered last night because I was looking, I was looking at a problem for like I don't know, a couple of hours, and I just could not get past it. This was uh, it was getting server error 500, kind of new to the HTTP API and API gateway, and that too is just like this has caused me grief. So he helped me this, just use common sense to walk through, uh, to debug it, and we figured out the problem together. So I appreciate that. Uh, so now, pop, pop it down. Let's go down to the, the main handler here. So we have the Lambda handler. Notice we're not using context, so it's grayed out here. Uh, we are using event, though. So it, in essence, you're supposed to call it by passing a desired date, um, which is uh, the, the date that you want the appointment for. Um, in CareCloud, it uses if you use if you pass it a date, you have to pass an end date as well. Uh, so a presumption you can look at a calendar of appointments for you know however many days long, but we're just wearing a day at a time here. So um, so you grab that determined desired date. We'll look at it and say first of all, did they pass anything? If they did, and it has various checks. If they if they did, use that, and if they didn't, uh, just use today. So we'll look at that in a moment. Uh, appointments object key, which is figuring out whether or not the, the, this day has been having a schedule already or has had an appointment schedule made for it already. And so we simply go and, and this is simply real basic logic that says put the date in you know sortable form and then dash appointments.json and give that back. So that just gives us a file to mess with. Uh, here's the actual appointments as a JSON formatted string. Um, I made a note here because I'm declare, I hate declaring stuff outside the scope where it's necessary. But in fact, I'm not sure if I declared it inside this if and then in this else 
condition if I would be able to reference it after the fact. So I, I just use classic practices of saying, well, let's, let's declare this at this level of scope and then reference it inside of both of these. So it's a simple, you know, two paths possible. If the file exists already, just load the file and give it back to them. Right? And then if it doesn't, then we'll do a couple of things. We'll determine the number of appointments based on the day. Uh, we'll take a uh, chance to actually generate appointments pointing at our, our patient's database, quote database, um, and grab that, get that as JSON as well. And then uh, we'll save it so that we keep it for the next time so we don't have to do it again, and then return the, the appointments. It's, uh, it's pretty straightforward. So all these other methods up here, and this is all great stuff. Uh, we're using Boto3, which is AWS. Is, uh, a wrapper for uh, getting to all the AWS services. Um, the only service we're using here, I believe, is S3. Um, let's see. This was interesting. A lot of daytime stuff I would never have known about, including time zone, which ended up not being used. Uh, but that was where I was dealing with some really wacky, very subtle uh, formatting error for, for dates and I can exp date and time, and I can explain that later. Uh, here's an example of where we determine the desired date. So we're checking parameters, but we're doing so safely that may or may not have been passed. So an alternative, this would be event square bracket, query string parameters, close square bracket, which could result in um, some kind of weirdo undefined exception. By using the safe get method, the query string params value could just simply be valued of none, right? um, which is a little cleaner, a little safer. And similarly, doing this one level deeper, looking for the desired date. There's probably one more check we could put in here, which is the value that was passed as desired date is not in fact a date, but I'm assuming like, eh, we'll just kind of bypass this as a tool. Uh, let's see, this is interesting. Number of appointments varies, right? So typically Saturday, Sunday are zero appointments. Uh, so just get back at zero if it happens to be a Saturday or Sunday. Um, Mondays and Fridays are surgery days, so they pretend to have less visitors on those days, less patients, less uh, smaller schedule. Tuesdays and Thursdays are the big days with just ridiculous numbers of patients where, you know, we're getting lots of, seeing lots of patients. And then Wednesday's reserved as an office day. Uh, so only maybe a couple of VIPs get added in if they're necessary or there's a, something that's of emergency nature. Um, so that's the way that works. Let's see. Uh, then depending on, you know, however staffed or stuffed the schedule is, uh, we're going to spread the appointments out over longer times or shorter times, right? So if it's greater than 20 appointments, we'll just see one every 15 minutes. If it's um, something less than five, we'll just go every couple of hours even. So that's that. There's that file name part. Here's loading the pre-existing appointments. Uh, this is one that Chat wrote, right? So very interesting. Chat wrote it with this stuff. It wasn't necessary because, you know, I only needed to, to take the JSON as it was and return it. So that's why it's so shortened. Uh, I was kind of just cutting into this to see if that was necessary or not, but it didn't seem to be necessary. Um, let's see, loading patients, which we know is JSON as well. It probably doesn't need this. I could probably strip that down too, then take the decode off. And then finally, the big one is the generate appointments. It's the one that has some interesting stuff in it. This appointment time, safe string, and uh, I'm end time safe string, I was actually losing, if I took just end time ISO format, which returns a string, and use that directly in this value here or here, um, it would, on return, sending it off or saving it, it would lose the time portion. And it was a really elusive bug. Probably wasted two, three hours just poking around, just trying to figure that out. Um, in the end, using this interpolation model, I think they have another special term for it. It was added like around 3.6 Python. But all the other languages have it these days. I use Dart a lot. Um, obviously, JavaScript, they have interpolation as well. Everybody's got their own format. Uh, let's see. And then we're back to the handler. So that's about it. Uh, I'll just go ahead and give this a run just to demonstrate. Oh, let's see. So in this repo, by the way, this is all up in GitHub. I'll put some notes in the, uh, I don't know if I'll put it in the description or what, but, but you know, you'll find it. and. Uh, this looks interesting. I wonder why that's there. Is that like that? Hmm. Quick fix. Interesting. <laughs> that's good. 
said. So anyway, it's like clicking in here. So uh, this is actually actively running. I guess I could show you this too. Let's see. So here it is up in uh, uh, actually AWS. We're in the AWS console. It's a no-no to be poking around here. But uh, CloudWatch log should be empty. And in our test bucket where, where we put both the quote patients the database, which we're only referencing patients 2000, um, but also it's run at least on one date already. Let's refresh this in case there's others. Yeah, so there's this, the first, the second, and the eighth have been run before, so that's why they have files existing. If we were to just pick a different date, let's see, like June 16th, so pick that, and we're coming back, and it generated, in this case, five different values for this. The idea being, by the way, that, that if you came back to this date, again, it's not different, it's still the same date, or same, same appointment, so that you can have some degree of realism when you're moving from day to day. Um, we use this, to, by the way, to just generate a subject, taking off the all the identified information and identifying information and making it anonymous. So, okay, there you go. Um, this is a, now that we've done June 16th, we should be able to come back in here, refresh, and we'll hopefully find that there's now a 616 appointments. So that again, if whether it's today, later, myself, uh, any number of other people, if they're running in test mode as well, they would actually not have to regenerate this 616 and it would be done and all set. That's it. Um, hopefully that is helpful. Let's see. Yeah, that's it. Talk to you soon.